All right, let's start with the big story that we are tracking today. We're on the third and final day of his India visit. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani was accorded a ceremonial reception at the Rashtrapati Bhavan in New Delhi. The Prime Minister Narendra Modi, along with President Ramnath Kovind, welcomed the Iranian President, who is on his maiden visit to India. Rahim. اگر ما در این سفر بتونیم به نقطه ای برسیم که اجداد ما در ایران و هندوستان با هم بهترین روابط رو داشتند اگر ما بتونیم به اون روز برسیم کار بزرگی کردیم the President Rouhani also inspected the Guard of Honor at the Rashtrapati Bhavan. He also met with the External Affairs Minister Sushma Swiraj. Now, the Ministry of External Affairs spokesperson Ravish Kumar has taken to Twitter after the meet. He said, and I quote, a close friend in our extended neighborhood. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swiraj called on President of Iran, Dr. Hassan Rouhani, strengthening cooperation in energy, connectivity, IT, education, culture, and people-to-people -people contacts came up for discussion. Now, the meeting was followed by a delegation-level talks with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. India and Iran are likely to finalize details about operation of the strategically important Chabahar port, ease of doing business, trade and investments between the two nations. Now, India is developing the Chabahar port on Iran's east coast as a way to gain access to markets in Central Asia as well as Afghanistan by bypassing the arch-rival Pakistan. Now, Hassan Rouhani will be seeking billions of dollars in terms of Indian investments in Iran during his visit that comes amidst the U.S. pressure to review the 2015 international nuclear deal and also reimpose sanctions on Iran. All right, now to discuss more as to what are the implications of this visit and what can we expect as to how India and Iran will be forging forward in the 21st century. We are joined in by guests from Germany. I'm joined in by Mr. Adnan Tabatabai, who is a political analyst on Iran. And also we are joined by Mr. Syed Mustafa, who is a political analyst and university professor and editor-in-chief of Iran's Far News Agency. So let me begin with you, Mr. Mustafa. You know, what does Iran expect of, of, of this visit of its president to India? Now, India and Iran have had long-standing historical ties. But how do we take this forward, considering the many problems that India and Iran face? Hello, and thanks for having me. Well, as a matter of fact, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the age-old ties between Iran and India uh, do not uh, accord uh, their present level of cooperation in various areas of uh, politics, regional politics, as well as economy. Mm -hmm. You know, Iran uh, enjoys a young, talented, and highly educated workforce and uh, a very young population. It is strategically positioned in a strategic position um, uh, linking the west to the east, uh, the waters of the right. south in the Persian Gulf to uh, the north. It could help uh, India develop its trade and exports the same way that India could help uh, investment in Iran. Iran owns the largest combined energy reserves of the world, gas and crude. Mm -hmm. And uh, if the, the two sides could boost the, the uh, volume of their economic exchanges to several times more than the present levels. In the meantime, they could also start cooperation on various regional scenes, you know, India is a uh, growing economic uh, uh, power on the regional scene and global scene, but it's not much assertive in the developments in West Asia, right. and uh, its uh, role, you know, is not felt pretty well in the fight against terrorism in Western Asia, although mm -hmm. it's suffering from the same problem of terrorism in Southern Asia. So the two sides could also exchange experiences and launch cooperation in the fight against terrorism in the region mm -hmm. they could also hammer out uh, you know alliance with China and Russia and other BRICS members in order to develop uh, a stronger economy on global stage and play a more strategic role a more powerful right. strategic role on the global scene 
Absolutely, indeed. We'll discuss more as to what and how India can, in fact, assert itself in that region. Let me also bring in Mr. Adnan Tabatabai, who's joining us from Germany. Uh, Mr. Adnan, you know, a lot of people, in fact, turn around and say that considering that Iran is seeking for a greater level of Indian investments in that country, but also in terms of the pressure which Donald Trump is putting in terms of the 2015 nuclear deal, do you think that is actually feasible? I believe it is important to bear in mind that even if the U.S. administration uh, had stayed committed to the nuclear agreement, Iran would still seek to improve mm -hmm. and keep intact its ties to the eastern powers. Right. Um, the Iranian ambition to stay independent uh, does mean to have similarly important relations to Western powers and Eastern powers. So obviously the, the hostility coming from the White House currently is making this trip by Hassan Rouhani to India even more important. Mm -hmm. But I would assume that this would have um, taken place nevertheless, um, even if those problems with regards to the nuclear agreement um, were not to be right now. Right, and also considering, you know, the difficult... Um you know, circumstances in which this relationship is, taking, is being taken forward. Now, Iran happens to be the second biggest source of oil for India. And apart from this, Iran is also seeking investments in, into its own country. Where do you see the potential for India and Iran is for this relation to be taken forward from here? I guess that we have already seen in the in the past nine months uh, um, the, the the trade from Iran to India has increased significantly. Mm -hmm. um, I think both countries can can capitalize on uh, each other's resources. Um, I believe that the, the the current climate does actually strengthen the incentive on the Iranian side to to improve these ties. Right. And as we have heard in your uh, introductory remarks. Um, there are various fields uh, going beyond trade that these two countries share, and uh, my colleague from Tehran has also mentioned that there are also joint security concerns that both countries need to tackle. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they can both benefit on the fact that many of the political problems that the West has with Iran or Iran has with the West are not necessarily those that India and Iran have been facing. So a pragmatic relationship focusing on different fields of cooperation, be it positive ones such as trade or, let's say, more negative and problematic dimensions such as counterterrorism, as was pointed out. These fields, I think, uh, show us a lot of ways forward. Absolutely, indeed. And let me bring in Mr. Syed Mustafa in, in, in on this. Uh, Mr. Mustafa, you know, India and Israel ties have been at an all-time high, especially in the last one decade. We had the Prime Minister of Israel visit India just last month. Do you see that to be a bit of a sticking point at all between India-Iran ties or can there be, uh, you know, India-Iran relationship which can be independent of the India-Israel relationship? Iran and India are very, um, you know, very much close and on the same page. They are in the same region. They are facing the same difficulties. Iran is, uh, you know, uh, offering uh, the largest energy supplies that it has and clean mm -hmm. supply of, you know, gas to India. Unfortunately, the project, the peace pipeline project between uh, that that would that was supposed to take Iran's energy supplies from uh, to, uh, to India through uh, Pakistan has not been implemented. But there are much more to share between these two nations and uh, uh, the Israeli ties with India. I do not, uh, you know, necessarily understand this as an obstacle on the way of uh, ties with Iran, unless. For the very fact that uh, Israel has always been trying to dissuade other nations mm -hmm. from developing ties with Iran. But one very important aspect, especially, uh, uh, I believe it would be followed, uh, and it has already been followed and mm -hmm. pursued by President Rouhani during his current visit to your country, is that uh, the two nations uh, are to guarantee their long term uh, trade exchanges through. Uh, very specific, uh, you know, moves like using national currencies and currency swap. Right. This would help both nations increase the value of their currencies first. Secondly, it would guarantee the long-term exchanges, trade exchanges, increasing trade exchanges between these two nations. So similar measures need to be adopted by these two nations in order to protect their uh, relations and uh, their long-term 
interests uh, within the formula of a win-win you know, uh, deal uh, right. in the long term. Absolutely indeed. We'll have to leave it there. So the India-Iran relationship will have to be a win-win relationship considering the very difficult geostrategic location that both these nations in fact share. Thank you very much to both my guests, Syed Mustafa and also to Adnan Tabatai for having joined us on this broadcast.